Hi guys! Uh, I have a dream to share with you today. Uh, I was, um, it was an audible, so I heard, get out of the churches. And then there was another sentence in French, ce qui s'éclate se dissout, ce qui se dissout en moi s'éclate. Sometimes the Lord speaks to me in different languages. Um, this is, I'll translate, what bursts, dissolves, and what dissolves in me, Lord Jesus Christ is saying, brightens, gets light. And... Um, I had another dream about um, um, that we were uh, circled uh, all together, a group of us believers, and the person next to me um, was, um, we weren't praying or anything, we were just together congregating, and the person disappeared into a puddle of water like limb by limb she started disappearing and I thought everyone was gonna scream or be scared but the person to my right was talking about the Holy Spirit and that when she uh, uh, fasts she gets closer to the Holy Spirit and as she's telling me this I could see she's getting like paler and white almost like um, as if the dream was in color and then she became black and white, almost see-through, and we had an understanding that um, this was um, from God and that sometimes He transforms us. Um, also, in the same dream, um, I saw on TV uh, this, um, what's it called? Uh, uh, like a face of a demon. It looked sort of alien-like because it had the big eyes, black, but the mouth was like more like uh, those skeleton, those skulls, like just teeth and very dark and um, kind of scary. And then right after I saw this man next to the TV and he had that. His face was like that. And then I understood, and everybody with me, the same group, that the Lord shows us who is the enemy. And sometimes, some people don't know it themselves. As the dream went on, uh, once in a while I could see someone with that face, and, but they didn't know we saw them, and the people around me, the believers, would just treat them differently, as in they would guard themselves. You know how it says in the Bible, guard your heart? So we were like guarded around anyone that had this face, because we knew they're from the enemy. Uh, which also brings me to talk about something that's happened, um, that's been fighting among the people on the YouTube and some channels are saying that this one is a witch and that one you shouldn't listen to and blah 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 and, uh, it was a bit uh, it, this happened last month and it was very it happened to me what I mean is it happened to a couple of channels that I was watching and there was like fighting so I went to the Lord in prayer and I was confused um, finally the Lord spoke through another sister of ours saying to us that there the enemy is trying to divide us and uh, finally she got another message from the Lord that I'm gonna read right now saying that all these channels that I'm reading are from God that they hear from him. This is what our Lord said. So there's Watch Woman for Christ, K 
Harry Ann Gidden. Change is coming. Behold I come. God's healer seven. Watch woman. Hope in him. Seek and you shall find. Mike 444. 278 Pike LK and Diana Olivieri. Uh, recently, our sister Diana changed her channel. I mean, the name of the channel. And I wonder just out loud if it's not because of these bickerings. And sometimes our Lord gives us messages that are hard to say that seem unbelievable. I know it happened with me with listening to some of Diana's messages that seemed very, um, uh, I don't know, it just it shook me up. But every time I prayed to the Lord, he confirmed to me, yes, this is from me, that at this time he is revealing things to us uh, that we can only know through him and being close to him. And um, I think the Lord really wants us to uh, always go to him in prayer and um, to really develop that one-on-one -on -one relationship. I mean, he says that he wants, but more than ever now. So even these, the message that I'm giving to you today, which is get out of the churches, that I got from a dream that I believe is from the Lord because I have many confirmations about it. Uh, still, pray about it um, so you will get your own confirmation from the Lord. Now, uh, one of the confirmations actually... Um, okay, I'm going to say this. If you are going to a good church where you feel, uh, you know, they're reading the Bible, um, you feel the Holy Spirit in the church, by all means, stay. Um, I guess I, I'm saying it kind of pains me to give this message that, you know, we should get out of the churches. But personally, my uh, experience has been that I went to a few churches and every time I was happy and I met new people and I was so happy to be there and then the Lord would just say, come out, come out. And, and in one case, I didn't want to believe it. And he showed me that the, it's, their doctrines are wrong and he showed me basically through dreams that he wants to show us personally, he wants to teach us personally gives give us his wisdom while we read the Bible and he does want to unite us with other Christians in our neighborhoods which he finally did so we 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 would just got to trust in our Lord um, with all our hearts so here uh, I found this is an old message I mean a few years back given to our sister Judy Webby and it's called Come Out of Babylon and it talks about you know coming out of the way of this world and here it talks about the churches at some point continue to listen to my instructions says the Lord all that is not of me will indeed fall one of the enemy's greatest accomplishments has been, from the beginning, of my church to create division through denominations. My church became so quickly consumed with traditions and doctrines and rites of passage that they forgot why I was here and what I taught you to do. When I walked on this earth with my di disciples, I taught you ways that are kingdom ways. These ways are simple, my friends. I walked and souped with you, talked with you, ministered to your needs, 
and prayed with you. Supt, maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I, it seems like he's saying, I had supper with you. I'm going to continue. Well, I'll take it, I'll repeat it. I walked and souped with you, talked with you, ministered to your needs, and prayed with you. This is all I have ever wanted our body to be about. We had communion, we had relationship. I did not try to organize anything. I embodied love, and that encompasses all. That still holds true, dear people. My ways are right and true and pure. I am calling up a people now that lays down separation, division, and vain attempts to find church as you have known it to be for so long. You know who you are now and all I require is that you ask my Holy Spirit to reveal to you the gifting and direction that I have created for you at this moment now. It continues, do not fear to step out into this calling for it is finally time to move. And um, I want to also uh, finish the video by including a video that I've been wanting to put up. Finally, um, I found out how to post like another brother's or sister video on my channel. But this requires me to um, get like a special program. And right now, there's not enough memory on my devices, on my electronic devices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little sample of this video that is from Mike S. And it's called, Is Your Church Gay? And this was a question that uh, somebody uh, sent in. And as I was listening to the video just before, there's this question of uh, something he announces just before he gets into the subject. Something about um, there's new laws coming in for um, composting humans or something like that. It seems very strange, guys, but it's like the Holy Spirit gave me knowledge instant. Um, I'm, uh, today I'm going to a funeral. And I've been going to a few funerals, and this is what I notice, that first of all, people are not um, uh, being buried anymore like before at all. Most people um, are, are finding like they're getting their loved ones incinerated. And then the urn, the, the, where the ashes are, often they end up in people's homes. Uh, actually, it's so much so that the florist uh, near my house, two florists have closed their doors. I, and I love flowers. And I went to ask, like, what's going on? How come you're closing your doors? And they told me, you, you know, there's no more funerals like there used to be, um, where people used to buy a lot of flowers or even like um, weddings like they used to be, like tons of flowers. and. Uh, that was one of the reasons they had closed. So um, what I'm um, understanding is that maybe they're now going to change, have laws in place that people could bury their loved ones maybe in their garden. Why else would they have such a law of composting uh, uh human remains it, it's very strange um and uh so okay that's i'm going to put the video on the video is mainly about how uh there's already a lot of 
uh, pastors and um, um, oh, you'll have to listen. I was very, very shocked to hear it actually when I heard this video. My mouth would just dropped. I was like, oh, what? And uh, I live in Canada and, and it, it, pff, it's all over the world, these laws. Okay, so let me show you. Well, here's some news. Washington State will be voting very soon on whether or not to allow human composting. That's the business of putting a human body in your garden, I suppose. So, uh, come time for tomatoes, you can tell your kids, hey, Aunt Tilly grew these for you. And the kids will be like, but Aunt Tilly's been dead since last December. Yeah, but she's still working on it. Yeah, good Aunt Tilly. All right. Uh, that wasn't very funny. It's just, none of this is funny. None of the way that uh, the, uh, the world is going is very funny. But I do have a question uh, sent in. Uh, it uh, says, uh, Dear Mike, is my church gay? Signed, Breathless in Beaumont. And that's all it says. I, it doesn't say where the church is or anything. So I uh, looked up Beaumont, and it turns out there are 51 places in the world where there is a city or a town named Beaumont. 19 in France, 10 in America, and 3 in Haiti. So what I'm going to have to do then is to uh, compile a list here uh, to let you know, Breathless, whether or not your church is gay. So um, let's begin. Uh, the Evangelical Lutheran Church and the Episcopal Church uh, allow the ordination of openly gay, lesbian, bisexual, and or transgender clergy. In 2012, the Episcopal Church of the United States approved the change to their non-discrimination canons to include gender identity and expression. Uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church in America decided in August 2009 to accept gay, lesbian, and bisexual clergy in, as it happens, sexually active but monogamous relationships, let's see, 2014, um, a person known as Megan Rohrer became the first openly transgender leader of the Evangelical Lutheran Church congregation. Uh, specifically, uh, Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church of San Francisco. So I don't know how close you are to that, but uh, there you go. July 2011, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Canada decided to accept gay, lesbian, and bisexual clergy. In 2016, the Anglican Church of Canada elected its first openly gay bishop. Uh, the Anglican Episcopal Church of Brazil supports the ordination of LGBT clergy. In New Zealand, the uh, Anglican Church in, let me, I'll have to spell this for you, A-O-T-E-A-R-O-A, -E New Zealand, and Polynesia ordained an openly gay deacon in 20, 2006. Excuse me. Let's see. In Scandinavia, the Church of Sweden permits openly gay, lesbian, and bisexual clergy. Uh, in 2012, the Diocese of Gippsland, G-I-P-P-S-L-A-N-D, in Australia, appointed an openly partnered gay priest. Let's see, in May 2009, the Diocese of Stockholm uh, elected uh, a uh, registered partnership, uh, Eva Brun, She's in a registered partnership with another woman. Is it required that you register whether or not you're a lesbian? I don't know. Um, let's see. Danish National Church, Church of Norway, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland, and the Church of Iceland permit the ordination of openly LGBT clergy. Okay, in Germany, the Lutheran United and Reformed Churches as part of the Evangelical Church openly... Uh, ordained, they ordained an openly LGBT Christian clergy in 2008. The North Elbian Evangelical Lutheran Church announces uh, that uh, Horst Gorski, who is openly gay, had been nominated as a Lutheran bishop, but uh, he was nominated, but he didn't get elected. In the United Kingdom, the Church of England has permitted transgender priests to serve since 2000. Um, Let's see, the Church of Wales has allowed priests to enter into civil partnerships since 2005. 
Uh, the Scottish Episcopal Church has ordained LGBT priests before, since before 2002. The Church of Ireland has no formal policy on civil partnerships. Uh, and the first priest entered into a same-sex civil partnership, one of theirs, uh, in 2011. In South Africa, Anglican Church of Southern Africa is among the denominations in which gay priests can be legally ordained. Let's see here. A bishop in the Church of South India, also part of the Anglican Communion, stated that he would ordain a transgender priest. Let's see. In the United States, Presbyterian Church USA allows the ordination of openly gay, lesbian, or bisexual clergy. Presbyterian Church in America, which is a little different, I guess, from Presbyterian Church USA, the second largest Presbyterian denomination in the United States, adheres to what they perceive as the biblical stance on homosexuality, affirming that the act of homosexuality is a sin according to God's word. Okay, well, if you live next to one of those, if you have a uh, Presbyterian church in America there in Beaumont, whichever Beaumont you're from, Breathless, you're out of luck there. Uh, the Reformed Church in America is another Reformed denomination in the U.S. with gay clergy serving congregations. The Church of Scotland discussed the issue at a 2009 General Assembly. Uh, this was in response to the induction of openly gay minister uh, Scott Rennie to serve at Queen's Cross Church in Aberdeen. Uh, so let's see. On 20 May 2013, the General Assembly of Kirk approved a proposal to allow gay, lesbian, and bisexual ministers. The United Methodist Church has also been discovering the issue, discovering, discussing the issue for many years. Mm. Its official position until May 18, 2018, excuse me, denied ordination to self-avowed practicing homosexuals. Uh, let's see here. United Methodist Church Judicial Council ruled that openly transgender pastor Drew Phoenix could keep his position. So the general conference the same year, several... Okay, so um, the it goes on um, for another 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to leave the link below. Um, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day, and God bless you. And if you don't know our Lord Jesus Christ, ask Him in your life today. There is no more time. And He will give you the peace, the, the Holy Spirit peace that only God could give you. Okay, I love you. But remember, God loves you more. Okay, bye-bye.